Hi, welcome back to the channel. Before we start, if you're new to this, please do think about subscribing. It would do me a great favour and help me build the channel now, moving forward. So, today I want to talk about GT7 on the PS5. Uh, I'm going to do a, it's kind of a review, but it's kind of just my feelings on it. So what I'm about to say is not factual, it's my opinion. So you can put it in the comments all down below that I'm wrong or whatever. You can't be wrong if it's your opinion, really, can you? So, this is what I, my thoughts on the game are. Brief history, I own the Xbox Series X and I also own the PS5. And I am probably... I'm not a PS5 fanboy, but I prefer the PS5. I think it's a much better console. That's my opinion. So if you go on and read forums on Facebook and stuff and all the other stuff, you're going to see that PS5 fanboys think this is the best game in the world and Xbox people will say it's garbage. The truth is, in my opinion, it's somewhere in between. So you're going to see video playing at the back, and the video playing at the back is purely so you don't have to see my ugly mug, and it's just obviously video from the game, and it's various cuts. I've cut it about and put it back together in different places, just so it's something to look at uh, when you're listening to me, basically. So the game itself is, in a nutshell, great. The graphics are so great, it's untrue. I've been playing in racing sims from right back in the day of Jeff Crammond's Grand Prix. Um, and if you do know what that is, that's a long, long time ago. Right through everything. Spectrum, Mega Drive, everything that I've played it on. And I'm now up to the stage where obviously I'm playing this on here. And I am a PC racer, so I don't really play racing games on my PS5. I have it a different setup. So I've got another setup. So I have the setup you've probably seen in, the vi in my videos before. And then I've got another setup in another room which has a 42 inch TV attached to the PS5. And I have a Fanatec CSL Elite wheelbase which I absolutely love. I've never had one before. Uh, I got it off a person on Facebook, a really nice guy on Facebook. So thanks very much for that, Mark. And I love it. I got that and I got the CSL pedals with it and the only thing I would say is I've ordered the load cell pedal because I'm not that keen on the brake pedal that comes with the bundle. However, I've been driving it with that. One thing I must say before I forget, well before I got that I was waiting for it to arrive. I'd been playing on the Logitech which was also, uh, sorry, Logitech on the Thrustmaster T248 which was also great but I sold it and there was a little bit of a period in between a day or so where I had no... Um, thing to play it on no wheel so I played it with the controller that game is awesome on that the controller on the PS5 to me is far better than any other controller on the market anyway but the game just plays so nicely on the controller it really does I was quicker on the wheel but it just felt so nice the everything the brakes felt superb when it used in the adaptive triggers so huge plus point on there so the game itself yeah looks beautiful plays really well there's things I don't like about it and things I love. I love the graphics, I love the way it's quite immersive, the cars feel good. I don't like the linear way you have to go through the game, but I guess that's just what they did. So it's great for new people that are just dropping in, but if you like me or other people have been racing a bit, you're probably going to find that a little bit laborious, but it does work. But then you've got other things where you can collect these roulette tickets and then you cash in the roulette ticket. What a complete waste of time, Sony. Because every single one I've unlocked is always the lowest prize and I must have unlocked 50. I don't, I don't understand. It's completely pointless to me and it shouldn't be in the game. There's no need for it. One thing I want to clear up is on Facebook, every, loads of people are complaining about the microtransactions. You don't need to do any. Just grind. If you grind out that game, you're going to be able to unlock every car you want and have as much money as you want. But you're going to have to grind to get it or spend the money. But don't complain about it because everybody does it. And there will be DLC packs coming out, I'd imagine, shortly. And they're going to cost money. But it's just the way the market is. There's no point complaining about something that is not set in stone, really. But it's just become the norm. It really has become the norm over the last few years. So here's my thing to it. So I've been playing it for a week and I've probably knocked in 30, 40 hours. Maybe I'm not knocked in like some of the other YouTubers you'll see, but I've knocked in 30, 40 hours. I've unlocked virtually everything now and 
I, I've got the gist of the game. I like it. I like the way it plays. But it's not a sim. Not to me. Not to me. So let's just get that straight. To me, that is not a simulator when I compare it to iRacing and Assetto Corsa competition. So I do drive ACC more than anything else, really. I, I was doing Formula 1. I've racked up 280 hours on F1 2021. And I love it. But it's a bit arcadey. I hope they make that better in the next one. But it's good fun to play. This is the best way I can describe GT7. So if I play ACC and I have 20 minutes on ACC, a race maybe, or an hour. Let's say I've done an hour and I've done some qualifying and I've got to the 20 minute race and I've had a 20 minute race and I come off. I go play on the G on GT7 to relax because it's not, it doesn't evolve me in the game like the other simulators do. I don't feel as if I'm driving a car. Now, obviously, none of this is going to feel like driving a car, no matter what you have. No simulator is going to absolutely get you to that point. But it doesn't. It doesn't get you there. It, it's brilliant, but it's what it is. It's a game. It's not, to me, it's a game or it's a collector's edition. It's something that if you're a car enthusiast, you've got to buy that game. You've got to have it for all the different cars on there. And all the different features they have and the way it looks. And I'd give the game 97% if I was marking it. So I haven't got anything against the game. But I, for my personal preference, it's not as good. What I love about the game is the fact that I can just go in and flick a couple of buttons on and I'm racing. So on, on my PC, and it's my preference to have everything set up. So I've got various, I'm running triples, and I have a dashboard set up. I'm going to do a video showing my rig. It's been redone quite a bit recently, but I have loads of different things set up on it. And I have to turn all them on, make sure they're all working. Turn on my transducers and stuff. That's my preference. I don't need all those, but it helps me get immersed in the game. Whereas I can just turn my PS5 on and I'm in the game. I wouldn't think it was as great if I didn't have a decent wheel. I don't think. I love that CSL Elite wheel. I've never had one. Like I said, I didn't have one before. I skipped that. I went straight to a CSW 2.5, which is a better wheel base. But I don't see that much of a difference in it, to be honest. I'm really happy with that wheel base. It doesn't go as much. I'm, I'm DD1, obviously. It's not like a DD1, but it's great for what it is. So much so that I've just bought ACC for the PS5. So you'll see some videos coming of that soon. Um, just because I wanted to see what the difference was. Now I've got a wheel proper rigged up to my PS5. I want to have a go. So overall, I'm not going to make this video too long. But overall, my opinion are it's a fantastic game. I don't understand the haters from the Xbox people. I don't understand this Xbox versus PS5 thing. I, don't, I really don't get it. I, I don't. Um, I'll have my say. I'll have my say that the PS5 is a better machine. And it's better catered for by the software market i think people there's more um things coming out for the ps5 only than there is for the xbox and i think the xbox series x came out and then halo which is what i bought it for in the first place when it first came out which was came out a couple of months ago just isn't very good it's a 60 70 percent game at max to me it's boring it's not what i saw and it's certainly to me not next gen whereas ps5 delivers that's all I'm saying about that PS5 versus Xbox thing. So it's a rambly video, this. I didn't want to do a proper review and say, oh, look at the graphics. This handles fantastically. Look at the force feedback. Yeah, the force feedback's fine. It works okay. I've not had an issue that other people say they have when they go full into a corner and you put it on full lock. You can still feel it move. I haven't had anything. I've had it just feel like it should feel. It feels great to me. And... That's about all I can say. The tracks are fantastic. The cars look amazing. And some of the racing, it looks amazing. I've watched some of the online racing. Super GT. I watched one last night, which was basic Holly Super GT. And the key, and it, was, it looked amazing. Them three are great. And it looked a really good race. I'm not in there. Chucked to their level, obviously. But, yeah, they made it look really good. So, that's it. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Or listening, as the case may be. That's why I put the video in the background with just watching my ugly face. Um, but yeah, thanks very much. If you haven't subscribed, please do consider it. I've got loads of content coming up. I'm going to be doing quite a big 
quite a few races on SEC for the PS5 because I want to see how good a PS5 is for running as a true simulation rather than running a PC. The PC is obviously the difference. I love the PC because I love mod the mods you can get for all different games. And I'll never ever come away from the PC. I like the power it has and the fact that I can do so much more on it than you can on a console. But I was blown away by the fact how well this played on this console which has made me get that. So I've got that coming up. I've got a couple more reviews coming up. And obviously I'll I'll pre-order pre Formula 1 when it comes out 2022 and I'll have a thing on that. So you're going to see a lot more content coming in the future. So once again, thanks ever so much for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.